Hey homeschoolers, hope everybody are doing good. You all know that we have recently launched a wonderful course for class 11 students. So we have a complete class 11 chemistry course. We also have complete class 12 chemistry course also. So many people are very, very happy with both the courses. And many were asking me like to show a sample video or a demo video uh, in a course, right? So here I came up with a demo video or a sample video for you all. The topic uh, that I brought here is ionic radii and isoelectronic uh, species. So you can just check it out the videos how it can be in a course. So this is the way I explain all the videos right from basic to depth. Even if you don't know any basic aspect, you feel the course being very easy. And remember, I covered the topic to the depth. Okay, you can attempt uh, any competitive question with A's if you practice and understand the concepts well. So enjoy seeing this sample video. This is how the videos are going to be in the courses. And if you want to go for these courses, you have to download homeschool application uh, and the link is provided in the description. Do check it out and enjoy our courses. Hey everyone, in this video, let us discuss everything about ionic radii. First, let us understand basic uh, aspect of formation of ion. See, any metal you take, for example, sodium. Okay, so any metal has a tendency to lose electron, isn't it? So sodium has got electronic configuration 2, 8, 1. One right, so if it loses this electron, it becomes stable, so it will lose one electron. And sodium is no more a neutral element now, right? Sodium is no more a neutral element. See, in sodium, you have got 11 protons inside the nucleus. Okay, so in the first shell, you have two electrons, in the second shell, you have uh, eight electrons, right? So you have eight electrons, in the last shell, you have one electron. So now you have removed this electron outside. So now this remains 2, 8. So now if you look at uh, this situation, one proton is extra, right? Previously it was 11 electrons, 11 protons and 11 electrons. So now you have removed one electron. That means you have 10 electrons and 11 protons. So it is no more a neutral. You can't keep the symbol as just an A. See, you have one proton extra, you have one positive charge extra. So that positive charge plus one you have to mention. Okay, so that is why we indicate plus one and it is called as a cation. Anything which has got a positive charge is called as cation. So this is a sodium cation now, right? So this is how cations are formed, positive ions are formed, right? And if you compare sodium and Na plus cation, if I ask you which is smaller in size, which is bigger in size, definitely look at here. In Na plus, you actually have only two shells because the last shell is no more now because there are no electrons. So when there are no electrons in the third shell, you cannot consider for the radius. So now the last shell, now the last electrons are present in a second shell. So obviously neutral atoms will have a greater radius as compared to cations. Okay, so this fact is very important. Fine. Now if you take a non-metal like F, Okay, fluorine, it has got electronic configuration 2, comma, uh, you know, 7, right? Atomic number 9, 2, comma, 7. Shell structure I'm writing. Uh, just electronic configuration with respect to shells. Now, it becomes stable if it accept one electron, right? And you know what? One electron is extra. It has got 9 protons, right? 9 electrons initially, but now electrons one electron you have added so nine protons and ten electrons you have now so one negative charge is extra so you will write that as minus one so negatively charged species are called as anions isn't it so now 
if you compare between f and f minus which is greater in size then definitely f minus is greater in size why because electron cloud see you have added electron see if i take fluorine's uh, structure so this is a nucleus of uh, fluorine okay so you have nine protons and this is the first shell and this is a second shell so in the second shell you already have seven electrons one two three four five six seven isn't it already there are seven electrons and now you have one electron extra so now there you will observe inter electronic repulsion inter electronic repulsion that means there will be a fighting between the electrons okay see all electrons are negatively charged shell is completely you know it no more space in a shell but one extra guy has come so there would be a lot of fighting among themselves that is what we mean by inter electronic repulsion because of the repulsion shell would move little away than its position because of the repulsion they are fighting okay because of this inter electronic repulsion the nuclear charge effective nuclear charge that is the nuclear charge experienced by these electrons decreases as a result in anion in anion because of this inter electronic repulsion you know anions are greater in size as compared to the neutral ions right say very famous questions uh if i have to tell you that were already asked in various competitive exams you know they would ask you something like this you have h plus you have h minus and h okay so which is greater in size which is smaller in size or or they will ask you something like this the arrange arrange them in increasing order increasing order of their size their size i mean the one which is smaller in size to the one which is greater in size that way you have to arrange so increasing order which is smallest so we all know like always remember cations are smaller than neutral atoms and these guys are smaller than anions so which is a cation here h plus is a smaller guy than h h is a smaller fellow than h minus okay so they all are very famous questions that were asked in the previous years right so this is what the concept so now how actually we measure the ionic radii okay see atomic radii is the distance between the nucleus and outermost shell so that is found out by uh, the bonding they are involved into isn't it if an element involves into metallic bonding metallic radii non metal if it involves in covalent bonding covalent radii but how do we find out atomic radii atomic radii also same thing guys it is the distance between the nucleus and that electron cloud outermost electron cloud but how do you find out it is found by measuring the distance between it is found by measuring distance between cation and anion cation and anion okay anion in ionic crystals in ionic crystal see nacl is a ionic crystal nacl suppose if i take this is a piece of nacl okay so solid structure is completely different okay so anyway for simplicity let me consider this is na plus ion and somewhere here cl minus ion is there and here also one more cl minus ion is there you know they will measure the distance between cation and anion okay there you had measured internuclear distance and you took half of the internuclear distance as metallic radii or covalent radii isn't it so here they will consider they will measure the distance between these two ions and then they will divide it by half so that gives the value of ionic radii okay so this is how ionic radii is found how ionic radii is found it is by measuring distance between cation and anion in ionic crystal 
okay so these are some aspects of ionic radii and coming to the trends how does ionic radii vary from left to right top to bottom it is similar to atomic radii that we discussed in the previous video okay same thing ionic radii also from left to right it will decrease okay and from top to bottom it will increase no doubt in that the trend is similar to atomic radii okay but now what is important is isoelectronic species okay so point number 1 is you know this aspect you should know that always cations are smaller in size than neutral atoms neutral atoms are smaller in size than anions so this is one fundamental aspect that you should know let us solve one more question on this and then uh, i will tell you what are isoelectronic species so this question is there in your ncert textbook itself so you have mg mg plus 2 al al plus 3 so they are asking which is smaller in size and which is bigger in size among the four guys which one is smallest and which one is biggest okay largest so that's what you have to identify see here magnesium aluminum magnesium comes in second group aluminum comes in 13th group so obviously obviously these guys are you know larger and these guys are smaller isn't it because the size decreases size decreases from left to right from left to right size decreases atomic size decreases similarly ionic uh, size or ionic radii also decreases okay so first you segregate like these are of one element these are of one element and this comes in second group this comes in 13th group that means these guys are larger than these guys so now now largest okay you know that these are largest these are larger than these so now you decide among the two which is largest this is a cation this is a neutral so neutral one is always largest than cation isn't it so so which is the largest mg is bigger ion here i mean not ion bigger element okay so which is the smaller so you know that these two are smaller than these two fellows now you have to decide among the two which is smallest you know that cation is smaller than neutral so smallest is al plus 3 okay so this is the ncert question that is there uh, so this is how the questions can be framed for the competitive exams right so understanding concept is very important so now let us discuss now let us discuss isoelectronic species so very simple isoelectronic species so first let me uh, give the examples for you so let me give you something like f minus right o minus 2 mg plus 2 okay and then al plus 3 na plus so these are different elements in ionic form isn't it so if this is a fluorine with atomic number 9 this is oxygen atomic number 8 magnesium is 12 aluminum is 13 and sodium is 11 so that was the atomic numbers if i ask you to find out how many electrons are there in these guys will it be same as atomic number never because they are in the ionic form yes they must have lost electron or gained electron wherever you are seeing positive charge what does it indicate the element must have lost electron wherever you are seeing negative charge what does it mean that element must have gained electron right so definitely here in the ionic uh, form the number of electrons are not same as atomic number it will be different let's find out how many electrons do they have f minus minus 1 that means one electron is extra 9 plus 1 10 right so 10 electrons are there in f minus O minus two. Actual electrons are eight. Minus two means add two for this eight. So you will have ten electrons. Ten electrons here. 
mg original electrons are 12 plus 2 means what you have removed two electrons from 12 if you remove two electrons it is 10 10 electron aluminium atomic number 13 plus 3 means 3 electrons you remove so you will have 10 na plus 10 electrons so all of them have got same number of electrons same number what is similar here electrons same number of electrons okay but but different but different elements they belong to different elements such species are called isoelectronic species Okay, so what are isoelectronic species? The elements, different elements having same number of electrons. Okay, so here the elements can be in the form of neutral form or they can be present in the form of ions. Okay, so how do you frame the sentence? The species of which are of different atomic number having same number of electrons is called as isoelectronic species okay so now how do you find out the size like if i ask you now the question number two i am raising to you all which of them is smallest which of them is largest this is where most of the students get confused to pick out the answer for the competitive exam but just follow the simplest trick here Trick is very simple. The size of isoelectronic species, you know, size of isoelectronic species, isoelectronic species, just a simple trick, guys. Always follow this, is inversely proportional to atomic number. Okay, so they are of different elements. Comparison is quite different. Okay, comparison becomes quite difficult. So, just follow this trick. Okay, so the one which has got greater atomic number will be smallest in size. The one which has got lesser atomic number will be largest in size. Okay, so this is the trick you follow. So, now you tell me which is the smallest. Smallest size must be having higher atomic number. Which guy has got highest atomic number? Aluminium. So, which is smallest here? Which is smallest here? Aluminium plus 3 is smallest. So, which is largest species? Okay. So, which one is large? Which one is bigger in size? The one which has got smaller atomic number is larger in size. Isn't it? So, smallest atomic number, lowest atomic number. So, which one has got lowest atomic number? Oxygen. That means O minus 2. O minus 2 has got, you know, more size. Right? So, more the negative charge, more is the electron cloud, obviously the size would be greater. More the positive charge, it must have lost too many, pro uh, too many electrons. So, that means positive charge is too much. So, that's the reason smaller in size. Okay, so of course, just focus on this trick, you can easily find out answers for such questions. Okay, so now a quick question that you are uh, telling me through the chart. Okay, so just answer to this question, you have, you have C minus 4, N minus 3, Neon and Na plus. See, all these are isoelectronic species. See, C minus 4. Atomic number of carbon is 6. Atomic number of nitrogen is 7. Atomic number of neon is 10. Atomic number of sodium is 11. Minus 4. That means 4 electrons you have added. So, 10 electrons. 7 plus 3, 10 electrons. Neon, 10 electrons. 11 minus 1, 10 electrons. So, all of them are also examples for isoelectronic species. So, my question is, which is the largest species and which is the smallest species. Okay, so you are sending answer through a chart box. Is that clear? So that is all about ionic size, isoelectronic species and the way the questions that can be framed on this concept.